start today, I guess I would just say, like, it doesn't matter what you've been doing for the last two months, the last couple years, like, it is, um, there's no reason not to just start today. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Soul Seeker Podcast. Today, we might be taking some deep breaths. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm sitting with, uh, I shouldn't even say sitting because we're doing Zoom remote calls, but um, I'm talking with one of my favorite yoga teachers in Santa Cruz where I live, and I'm so bummed that we're still in lockdown. It's been two months, and it, uh, Zoom yoga just hasn't been working for me personally. But with that, Alicia Slaughter, everyone, she lives in Santa Cruz. She's a yoga teacher. She's amazing with her health and wellness and her nutrition and a mom, a wife, and a tech person working over the hill in Silicon Valley. So with that, Alicia, welcome to the pod. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you- to be here. Yeah, thank you for being here. And, you know, I definitely messed up on some of the audio issues heading into this. And I was joking with you that we needed some deep breaths. So I think that's a good place to start. You know, um, let's talk about your yoga uh, background. How did you get into yoga? So I started my yoga journey really because one of my best friends was a yoga teacher. And um, I kind of used it as an excuse to go hang out with her and uh, get a little break from my kids. I started when my kids were younger, so probably started about close to 15 years ago. And um, I started off going once a week and it was really just to have some girl time and you know spend time with her. But then I, I realized and I started to really notice the benefits after I had been practicing for a while and kind of showing up, you know, in that non-attached manner, right? I wasn't going with really any um, real goal in mind, but I started to notice that when I hopped on my mat, the bottom of my feet would get like all itchy and not in a weird like fungus way or anything, but like in a weird like, ooh, like vibey like way. Like tingly. Tingly, yeah. yeah. Um, what did I call it? <laughs> You said itchy, itchy and then not in a weird fungi <laughs> way, <laughs> but now that's like something that, no, no, but we're, that's going yeah. to be something we are concerned about once the studios reopen right. in terms of the virus and everything. But yeah. anyways, yeah, continue. Um, so I started to notice when I started to step onto my mat, which is now kind of like my little magic carpet that I started to just realize, like get that woo woo woo, like you're on a roller coaster or something like, oh man, this is going to be good. And so I really started to notice how much I loved it then. Um, And then I started going more and more. And I had always been the type of person that felt like, oh, if I'm not running or pushing myself or doing CrossFit or doing something that's really um, high high intensity, um, that I I didn't really like it. I wasn't drawn to it. So at first I wasn't drawn to yoga because it wasn't intense enough for me. But, um, But then when I started to really feel like that connection with it and the benefit from it, And then I really started to realize the power of slowing down and being really present in my body um, and how much that benefited not only my body, but then my mind. Um, I really just started to go all in. And once you kind of commit to the practice and, um, and see the benefits of going slow and moving slowly, I mean, I've never been stronger really in my life. Like my yoga practice has made my body really strong. And then what you feel physically in your body starts to translate to your mind. And so it's this whole mind body. And it's like, if I have an hour, um, I like to run too, which is another kind of form of meditation for me, but um, I will always kind of pick yoga because it's really the only time my brain stops, which is like so nice to just be like, okay, I'm going to give like, I'm going to give you a little break because you go a million miles an hour all the time. So that's kind of basically how I got started and kind of how I I got into it. But it did take me a while to connect with it in that way. Which by the way, your, your class is challenging. That's what I like about it. Um, You know, yoga, I agree that for me and for most people, when they first start out, like it seems like, oh, this isn't challenging and this isn't fast enough and things like that. But um, you have a traditional vinyasa flow, but you have the sweaty flow that you used to do when things were open. Yeah. And, you know, it definitely would get more sweaty on those. And when you hold the positions and you really challenge yourself and you're pushing your muscles out as far as you can and really holding on, like it is super challenging. And people that don't do yoga don't understand that. Yeah. And it's really, your practice can be as passive or as challenging as you want it to be really. Um, And the more in body you are, 
um, and the more kind of activated you are, even if you're holding a pose and you would think like, oh, that, that can't be that hard. But if you're really thinking about how your feet are connecting with the earth and if your feet are pulling together and your core is engaged and then all of those things are happening and then you hold it long enough, then you start to challenge your breath. And then that's where as you go in with your practice, it really becomes more of like, how can I challenge my body to the point to where it starts to challenge my breath? And then you always need to come back to your breath, slowing down your breath. And it's, um, and as I got more and more into the philosophy of yoga, um, it's really all about that connection with your breath. And so the more it kind of you challenge, like, cause you'll go into some postures like twisting and you'll want to hold your breath, but it's really about kind of relaxing into that being engaged, but then also trying to slow down and come back to the really smooth inhales and exhales. And, um, obviously you can tell I love it, but, um, it's uh, it's like really a breath practice. And then it's the body practice to connecting to the breath practice. And then once you can control the breath then you can start to control the fluctuations in your mind, which is the ultimate goal of being connected with all of those things so much to where, you know, if you're so focused on your breath, then you start to be less focused on what's going on and all the fluctuations of your mind. And that's really the goal at the very end of it. Hearing you talk about the goal and the benefits, yeah. it makes me quickly realize why I've been in a funk this entire week and feeling like shit, because it's the, the one week during all of quarantine, I have not done yoga once. I've been pretty yeah. good at doing yoga at least uh, close to once a day, even if it's just like yeah. a 30 minute YouTube video. But um, honestly, it's tough. It's tough to do yoga at your house. So do you have any tips for people listening that are struggling, whether it be home workouts or yoga or anything else in terms of how to um, get into a routine? I know it's two months into quarantine, two and a half or whatever yeah. it is. So hopefully most people have a routine. And, you know, for me, I get off routine. So if you have any yeah. tips, would love to hear them. Sure. Well, I guess I would say, um, I think people have been going about this whole quarantine differently, right? Some people have been like, this is my opportunity to do all the things I wanted to do, exercise every day, you know, they've taken that approach. Some people have been taking the approach of really not doing much and just taking it easy. Um, so I think, you know, depending, it doesn't really matter where you are. It's like any, any day is like a fresh start and a day that you can start to do what you want to do. Um, so I will just say that, like, even if you've been doing nothing the last couple months, um, your body craves and needs movement and needs to connect to breath and even gentle movements good. So, you know, start today, I guess I would just say like, it doesn't matter what you've been doing for the last two months, the last couple of years, like it is, um, there's no reason not to just start today. Um, but in terms of creating a space in your home that, um, that you're going to want to come and sit down and move your body in, um, for me, you know, my yoga mat is my little, like I said, my magic carpet. So wherever I place that, it's like, as soon as I sit on it, but I've trained myself, you know, um, through practice, but no matter where I lay out my yoga mat, um, is really where I practice. So my yoga mat is my, my space, um, for yoga. And I have moved, I've lived in four different houses in the last couple of years. I've moved a lot. Whoa. And, and so I have, found and placed my yoga mat in all kinds of places, right? I've placed it in a walkway. I've placed it in a hallway. I've placed it in front of a door. Um, and so it does take some flexibility, um, no pun intended <laughs> or pun intended. I don't know. Um, but you know, just the hardest part is getting started in the first couple moments. It's kind of awkward. And sometimes you don't really do it. You don't really want to do it but then you get going and like, no matter what, you feel so much better afterwards. So even if it's a struggle, the whole 30 minutes, you just have to remind yourself, like some days are harder than others, but I know that I'm going to feel so much better after I do this. So yoga mat is number one, or just a little area, um, where you feel like you can commit to sitting down. Um, and like, you know, regular exercise, uh, or not regular exercise, but like, um, hit exercise or other types of movement. Um, are a little bit different because, you know, it does matter True. the surface that you're on. Um, but I just say commit to it, find a small spot, go outside. And, and actually, I would say go outside as much as possible right now. Fresh air is so important. I wouldn't um, have thought about that for yoga, but that's a good point. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you don't have a space in your house, go outside, go on your deck, find a little bit of, you know, go on the beach. 
you know, us around here, I actually went on the beach the other day and did some yoga before the Rangers started going around um, at 11 and, um, you know, did a little yoga sesh with a couple friends six feet apart. And then we jumped in the ocean afterwards. And I can tell you that was one of my better days lately. That sounds um, amazing. So Sign it really me up. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, don't you, tell anybody, but you can come next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, honestly, like if you were to start charging people to um, do beach yoga with social distancing, yeah. I would pay for that much quicker than a Zoom class. Like it, it's finally hitting me in terms yeah. of missing the human connection, but like on a big, um, in a big way, yoga. So um, yeah, that yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> Well, we could probably arrange that. I've thought about doing it, but then, you know, putting it out there and having a big crowd of people at the beach. I've just, it's so awkward lately, kind of don't yeah, know what to true. do or how to act all the time. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. And what was I going to say? Oh, a couple other things I really like about setting up a space, I will say, is that, um, you know, for me, kind of lighting candles or having like props that I really like, like a meditation pillow or even some, um, aromatherapy, aromatherapy oils, or I have like my little singing bowl and, you know, making a yoga playlist, like all those things really help to kind of get in the mood. So I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I want to mention that like, even coming to this podcast just now, I wasn't feeling grounded. And one of the things I did was, um, light incense. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I forget to do with the, uh, with doing yoga, but that is like, it's weird. Just like the smell and just seeing the stream of the smoke going up, like is a little grounding, you know? So yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. So I'd, I'd like to circle back on uh, the beach. You mentioned doing yoga at the beach and I'm going, you know, bring something else about uh, whether it's doing yoga by yourself at the beach or maybe meditating at the beach, this type of stuff, or you see people doing, um, what's it called again, where it's the motion and Tai Chi or something like that. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've never done it, but things like that, like, I'm not someone who is com comfortable enough in my own skin to go out and do whether it's yoga or whatever mm -hmm. out in the beach where, uh, cause I'm up in my head, right? Like, yeah. Oh, are people judging me or looking at me? Like, is that something that you feel comfortable doing by yourself? Um, yes, I, I think so for me. Yes. Um, but I, I don't, feel embarrassed very easily. <laughs> I do, yeah. you know, I kind of put myself out there quite a bit. Um, and, uh, don't have a lot of like, what's that hashtag, like no shame or whatever, you know? Um, I don't really like, uh, I probably should feel a lot more embarrassed than I do. <laughs> um, no, don't shit on yourself. Uh, I invite you oh, not to shit on yourself. No, yeah. not like I'm shitting on myself, but I'll definitely like, I, I'm looking for stuff like that sometimes. Like my husband always makes fun of me because I'll go to like um, events and I'll definitely like be the one called up on stage or like if someone's doing karaoke, I'm like, I'm going to do karaoke. So I'm not like really super self-conscious in a lot of those ways. Right. Um, but I could see someone that is self-conscious, you know, um, would, you know, would feel that way. Um, but I say, you know, find a buddy and go with a buddy. And I, you know, Exactly. Like that's what I'm getting at here. Like it's uh, for some reason, and it's just like the human psyche, the human condition. I think uh, I'm not going to make assumptions, but I would imagine maybe half of our population, if not more, would feel self-conscious, right? But then just having a buddy, just having one yeah. person with you doing it with, all of a sudden, like there's something in the wiring of our brains where it's yeah. like, oh, this isn't weird now. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Well, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna look silly together, right? Yeah, exactly. It's better feeling silly with someone else, and I think there's so many people that feel like that too. And so even just reaching out and putting it out there, you know, saying, "Hey, you want to do this?" It's like someone might be like, "Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for someone to ask me because I've been scared to do it myself." So it's a cool thing just to put yourself out there and find a buddy to do cool stuff with. Uh, yeah, I went paddle blowing with a friend um, probably right after lockdown started and we got back and we left our boards on the beach and 
we just started doing yoga and we probably did it for like an hour and it was a sunny day and a ton of people out. And I remember the first 10 minutes, I was super self-conscious and super uncomfortable. Like, are people looking at us weird? Are we, are we like those people? And like all the stupid thoughts that come in your yeah. head, you know, and then all of a sudden, like they all just went away. I just like closed my eyes and then just got like, it followed my breath. Like you were talking about, yeah. it was, it was for me, one of the better memories of um, being in lockdown, kind of how you said yeah. it was for you too, with your friends. Yeah. So that's really cool. One of the things I want to talk with you about too, is you have a very go, go, go personality. If people can't, <laughs> can't figure this out, if they didn't figure it out by now, we'll paint the picture too. You have uh, two kids, is it? Teenagers. Yep. Yeah. Teenagers. And you live in Santa Cruz and you work in tech over the hill. So before quarantine, how many days a week would you have to commute? So about three, sometimes less, depending. I was traveling a lot too. So um, kind of depending on my travel schedule, but we'll see what happens after this, right? I think a lot of right. people are going to be uh, traveling and commuting a little bit less, well, a lot less. Um, so we'll see what the, the next normal has for us. But yeah, I was commuting and uh, being a mom and a wife and all that and trying to fit in all my self-care stuff. So and teaching then, yoga mm -hmm. and then your business as well. Yes. And fitting all of that in obviously where I can like the health coaching and, um, and the teaching yoga and that all, you know, kind of came about because working high tech and over the hill, as I know, you know, um, it's, awesome to have those types of jobs around here and to be able to be in those types of industries. Um, but after a while, I just kind of found that um, I wanted to help people in a way, you know, I, I struggled quite a bit myself with, um, you know, in different parts of my life. And I found all these really awesome tools that I use to help me kind of balance everything out. And um, I really felt a calling to share it with people. And also it helps me stay in my practice so that if I'm always thinking about how I can share it with people and hopefully inspire people, then it kind of helps me also stay inspired and stay healthy. So um, as much as it's like in service, I guess it's also a little selfish, you know, in that way, because it's like, makes me feel good too at the end of the day. So. Well, I, I agree that when you teach, you're really owning your craft just further. So it, and it keeps you accountable as well. So yeah. totally agree with that. So let's talk about though, in terms of uh, what you do, tell us about what you're doing. I attended one of your workshops, just one, I think, um, where it was about your diet and honestly, yeah. like that for you had such a huge impact on the way I look at food and the way I was buying groceries. And my biggest problem is that it's a story I'm telling myself, but I'm consistently inconsistent. Yeah. So like, you know, I would get in the habit for like three weeks and every now and then I'll get in the habit, then I fall out, but the lessons are still there. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your approach to food. So, um, that's totally normal by the way. And I think what you do 80% of the time is most important. And that 20% of the time, I think you should have the freedom to fall off or to eat whatever you want or to go out and eat yummy food. So I, I, um, I don't eat hundred percent, like really strict. I don't think it's any fun. And I think it actually creates food issues. So, you know, being a mom of two teenage girls, I do not want to create any kind of issues around food, but you know, what I try to teach people is that, um, you know, your body needs a certain number of nutrients um, to survive essentially and the, and the right combination of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. And so what I have found through all of my studies is that, you know, eating primarily um, vegetable based with the right amount of protein and healthy fats most of the time um, really is going to make help you know, um, decrease inflammation. It's going to boost immunity. It's going to help balance mood. It's going to help, you know, manage your weight. Like I don't, I'm not into, and I'm actually don't, I'm not a, a health coach that really goes after helping people lose weight. Cause if you eat the way that I suggest that you eat, you'll manage your weight. I just, the whole weight loss culture, I'm kind of sick of. I don't, I don't own a scale. I will never have someone like maybe at first they'll count calories just so they get an idea of what everything is and kind of track their, um, macro micronutrients, but I'm never going to 
I'm never going to be like a weight loss coach. Um, that's not what I'm after. I'm all about like how you feel foundationally, how you feel in your body, how you feel in your life. Um, if your body is able to move in a way that's, you know, feels good for you. If you're, if you're able to do all the activities you want to do, I mean, you know, if you want to get up and you want to go in the ocean and paddle around, I mean, you want to feel healthy. I want to get up and go for a run. I want to go, ride my bike around. I want to play with my kids. I want to do yoga and I want to feel like light in my body. So, um, my approach to health is really all about that, um, foundationally and everybody's a unique being and has unique needs. So I try to empower people with that knowledge so that if you do fall off, you know, you know, you know, you've taken the steps and have the base knowledge to come back to the a style of eating, um, and awareness around that, that's going to help you be the healthiest that you possibly can. So um, that's really the foundation of my health coaching. And then, you know, I, I like to help people if they're struggling with um, hormonal imbalances or maybe intolerances to food or, you know, it's, I just want people to feel good in their bodies. So that's kind of my ultimate goal. It seems like to me that your approach to food is more about mental health than it is about appearance, wouldn't you say? Well, it, and it's, it's all, it's about a physical health. So, oh, okay. but, but the foundation of it all is mental because, um, for example, example, like stress, right? Um, stress is like the leading cause of disease. Um, and if you are not, if you have a lot of stress in your life or you don't have tactics for dealing with stress, um, or in general, you know, you are constantly have the story in your head and you're beating yourself up about, you know, eating too much or feeling fat or, you know, I want to look in a bathing suit or I want to lose, I want to like drop two pant sizes. It's just like, well, okay, well, why, you know? And it's like, if you don't deal with, there was some meme the other deal, the other day, it's like, you can eat all the kale you want. You can do all this stuff. But if you don't deal with, excuse my language, the shit going on in your head, you're never going to be healthy. So I just think that whole thing of like, I want to look a certain way is, is like, I try to help people reprogram that to being like, I want to feel a certain way. And a feeling is more internal and more in your mind than it is like how you look. So I encourage people just to throw away their scale. You know, I, I don't really see any benefit into waking up every day and weighing yourself. Um, you know, it's like, you can still be like five pounds overweight and feel amazing. Like if you feel amazing, what is five pounds going to do for you? You know what I mean? So and especially if you're just trying to be healthy. I think everyone should just try to be healthy in their minds oh, and their bodies. <laughs> definitely. Now, what's your passion behind this? I know you have a big passion that really got you to here. Uh, could you tell us a little, kind of how you, why you're so passionate about it? Sure. So I think anybody who ends up, um, you know, being a health coach or a wellness coach or, you know, getting really into yoga, there is some kind of a, uh, traumatic thing that's happened to them or some kind of um, journey that they've gone through. So I guess, you know, mine probably started somewhere, you know, uh, as a child. I mean, we all have our traumas and our stories and the buildup and all of that. But um, I guess, you know, after I had kids, it really was super stressful for me. I was a young mom, you know, I had um, my first child. I mean, not super young, but I was 25 and I had my first child. And then um, I pretty much went straight from college to working, to having kids, to getting married. And there wasn't like a lot of time for me to kind of like, okay, who's Alicia? Like, how is Alicia going to transition into an adult? And like, what does she think? It was like straight from being like a kid to an adult with kids without kind of any like time in between. So it was a hard transition for me with the kids and I was pretty stressed out. And then all my, I had a lot of hormonal issues um, following that. So as I was trying to deal with all these things that were going on in my life, you know, you go to acupuncture and you go to different doctors and um, you're just like really trying to feel good. Um, you know, you're not sleeping enough. And then um, I took a lot of time and I started feeling better. And then I think it was 2016 where it was like my year of yes. And I was like, okay, so I have seen so much improvement in my life with all these different things I'm trying. I really want to be, um, I'm going to go and get my yoga teacher certification and I'm going to be a health coach. And so my year of yes, when I was finally like, I'm going to take time for myself and like do all this stuff. It was like the worst year of my whole entire life. So I think that was in January where I decided to do all of that. And then 
in March, uh, my dog died. And then two weeks later, my mom um, essentially committed suicide. She had depression and um, anxiety issues. And she, and we had been dealing with her with that for a really long time. She struggled for a long time and that she finally kind of, um, that, you know, ended her life. And then, um, but meanwhile, through all of this, these things that happen. And then after something really traumatic like that happens, it's like the grieving process and all the things that you go through were just another kind of level of stressors that I had to deal with. And also, um, I think just the trauma of having a mom that was a, an addict and really struggled with being happy most of my life. It's like when something like that ends, it's like all the years of pr processing, like what you had been going through and trying to, I mean, I, you know, taking care of her and always worrying about her. So, um, you know, I've been dealing with that the last couple of years, but as I was dealing with that, I was really, I was going and, you know, studying yoga to be a teacher and I was studying all nutrition. And it's like, I went through all of that kind of being my own test case for the power of, um, like holistic nutrition and yoga. And I mean, I think, you know, being a human is kind of hard and we all have our struggles anyways. I wouldn't say that I'm like, I'm totally fixed and like, I'm so happy every day and I never have any problems anymore, but I just have like a, a toolkit now to where I feel like even when I get really low or when I, you know, still grieving all the things that happened. Um, and then there was more to that where I had to move and I had to move out of a house I lived in my whole entire life. And it was like just this whole kind of thing, but um, the power and the, the, the core and just the baseline of being able to come back to like my practice of yoga and the practice of breath and meditation and knowing that it's like, if everything else is out of control, I can still feed my body nourishing foods. And I know how important sleep is. Um, and I have like these tactics to manage stress. Um, I think, like I said, it's hard to be a human in general and just to have those in my toolkit to pull from definitely helps me kind of keep my head above water and still, you know, get up and go to work and do all the things I want to do and then have the energy to still like, Hey, you know, um, be of service to other people and share my yoga and share nutrition and all of that. So that's kind of my, my why I guess. And it, and I think it also has to do a lot with my mom because she struggled so much and she wasn't ever able to kind of find a way of um, feeling better. She really relied on like popping pills all the time, which didn't work for her. So I am on a mission to be like, me and my girls will not be like that, hopefully. And anybody else that I can help, that I can help them approach their issues holistically rather than reaching for a pill. And if I can save like anybody from that path that I watched her go on, I would feel like, you know, that's kind of my journey now and what yeah. I would like to do, so. No, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. And it sounds like your mom, the way you paint the picture, it reminds me of the documentary, What the Health, which you've probably seen. I don't, I've not seen that. I should probably have, watch it. <laughs> have you heard of it? Yeah, I think so. So for the listeners as well, it's on Netflix and it's called What the Health and they break down just how corrupt <laughs> our society is essentially in, in a way that relates to food obviously yeah. out of the shadows that which was huge on youtube that documentary is another one about corruption this one's about food and really um pharmaceuticals and the um, pills and a lot of it is about how food heals and yeah. how like you might go to the american heart association or the breast cancer website or whatever the, uh, the case may be one of those nonprofits that is um doing great work on the surface, but then you look on their website and you look at who they're getting funding from and you look at the type of foods and meals that they're recommending and it's all leading you to get sick. You know, it's, it's this, yeah, it's ancestral. Is that the right word? But yeah. Well, so. and one of the things, you know, that kind of made sense to me too, when I heard someone say it was, um, and you know, not, not across the board is every um, medical person like this, but the whole medical system is not set up to heal you. It's set up to keep you coming back. And so, you know, just the whole system's super messed up. And um, what I watched my mom go through with some of the doctors she went to, it was just like disgusting. 
and I mean, the amount of medication they put her on and um, how out of it she was all the time. And I couldn't even believe some of the stuff that they gave her. And so, you know, I think it's, you know, sometimes medication is necessary. Like I know if you're dealing with severe depression and you are unable to come out of it, I think that, yes, like definitely take medication, but don't stop there. Like make sure you're doing all the other things to, to help support yourself. Um, and then maybe someday you can start to wean off the medication or I just don't think a hundred percent of the time you're going to find all of the solutions to your problems in the bottom of a pill bottle, um, maybe ever. And so that's why it's like, if you're popping a pill to try to fix something, but you're not getting enough sleep or you don't get fresh air, or you don't get sunlight and you're not feeding your body healthy foods. It's just, you're going to be hooked on that pill for the rest of your life, trying to find relief. And it's like, it just makes me sad for people. So just education, you know? Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I don't think we need the pills at all, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And that's coming from someone that does not have a background it, to make a statement like that, it, to be completely yeah. honest. It's just from what my own intuition tells me and at how we look back at the history of the human race, or even if you look at people in indigenous cultures, there's absolutely no reason why we need pills, if you think about it. I mean, we've created this monster that is this current society that we're living in. And the nice thing about COVID-19 with respect to people losing their lives and losing loved ones and losing financial abundance, you could say, yeah. um, there's a lot of amazing things that are going to and are happening as an aftermath. So I think we're getting more we're slowly moving back to a more localized type of living. You know what I mean? Yeah, I am. Um, I hope that we come out of this changed, you know, that's my hope. Um, I also think our society is so tightly wound up and the focus is, you know, like living in Santa Cruz, right? Like I've not even seen any of the rents go down. I've not seen anything really change. Like, for this to change like the, the foundation of this life that we've created for ourselves, right? I mean, it's so, like for example, right? I would love to be able to transition from my high tech job to be able to teach yoga and do nutrition all the time. But just the way that um, our society is set up, you know, I mean, to live here in Santa Cruz too, it's like we're two, um, two income household, even just to float, to pay our rent, to like help our kids you know, get ahead in life and do some of the things that they want to do. And um, I would love a simpler life, like a hundred percent. And I've been trying to figure out my, you know, how to transition to that simpler life. Um, right now I'm just putting money in my 401k, hoping that I can, um, you know, retire someday, but it's, a, uh, you know, and, and then you see those people like living in their cars in their, in a van, you know, yeah. and they have the freaking life. Like they figured it out. Yeah. They don't, they don't need money except for gas. They just need to make enough to get some food. And my husband and I've talked about that before. And it's like, they really have it all figured out. Like they don't need anything except for their van and their life is easy. And it's like, but now, you know, we've pivoted so far and I feel like we're so in a hole of where we are right now that I think you can make some changes, but I don't know. I don't know what you think, but I, uh, I don't see my way out of this right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I might be a little dis disconnected from from what's actually happening because I'll take in what's happening in terms of the news and and just um yeah. how divided everyone is right now and it's just it's sickening to be honest like there's I was just looking at something last night where this girl on uh that I follow on Instagram posts like some incredible stuff in terms of what's going on in terms of uh like the conspiracies um uh, yeah you know have you seen out of the shadows on youtube have you heard of it no i i have yeah. um i need to do better at keeping up with all this stuff <laughs> i'll i'll put in the show notes for everyone as well um but out of the shadows is a documentary that went on youtube that hit like 10 million views or something within a week or so and then 
now they changed the not algorithm but the search so it's super hard to find because they're trying to hide it but basically it starts with someone who is in hollywood and he brings on people from cia from the cia and they're whistleblowers but they're all they're, they're there's proof like they're bringing in documents that show that the cia is basically working with hollywood to brainwash us all and they talk about like the programming like literally television is called programming because they're programming us and then it gets into the celebrity death dinners or whatever they're called with all these celebrities that are doing like satanic stuff and then it gets oh, into uh, yeah, and then it gets into the Jeffrey Epstein stuff and the um, mm -hmm. the child um, molestation, all that type of stuff, and it's it's. I mean, I I believe that. I don't think yeah. that this they're just making this up, and they have hard evidence. And why is it getting censored on YouTube if it's uh, if there's not truth to it, and yeah. they don't want it to be out? So it's interesting. But my point is, um, anyways. So my friend, um. I should use that term loosely, but um, she posts a lot of this type of stuff on Instagram. And yesterday she posts something about Obamagate and we're recording this on May 29th, 2020. Have you heard of Obamagate? Uh, you know, I don't pay attention to any of this yeah. stuff. I really am just Neither like, do I. <laughs> so we'll, I love this just, one. I'm, I'm going to take notes of all the things I need to watch and catch up. I'm not saying that you need to do any of this, but <laughs> you, you asked me a question. So, yeah. I, I, okay. So Obamagate is basically, um, tr you remember how Trump had like Kofefe a few years ago or something? He, he misspelled a word on Twitter, uh, yeah. Kofefe or whatever. And he just does these weird things we all, and stupid things. And we all know this, but um, now Obamagate, it seems like it's just something he's making up. And anytime he gets pressed on what it is, um, he isn't able to explain it. So I'm asking this girl, like, what is Obamagate? And she's like, it's massive. It's so serious. I'm going to go, what is it you know and yeah. they can't say anything and so just the point of saying like from what's going on on a political stand and um george uh, floyd and everything yeah. else like there's so many things that are going on in the country right now besides covid19 i'm trying to know just enough of what's going on but live in the woo woo world of like lee harris have you ever heard lee, lee harris I'll send you Lee Harris. Okay. Um, so Lee Harris channels light beings, spirit guides. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's pretty deep, but basically, uh, in that he I'm talks into about. That. Maybe you're into that. Yeah. I'll I'll send you this meditation. <laughs> you'll dig. But it's it's positive stuff, basically. Yeah. And I've heard it from other source sources too. They say that what we're going through right now is a four year cycle, and we will have more awareness of what actually is going on around COVID-19 in uh, about like nine months from now. Yeah. But the true transformation isn't going to happen in, until 2030. So, yeah. Okay. So 10 more years. So essentially we have four years of living like this, not necessarily in lockdown COVID-19, but with like weird stuff and transformational stuff yeah. that's going to be really hard. And then six years of the work that's going to get us to what, where we were like five minutes ago talking about like, oh, I don't know if um, it, it, rent's going to go down Santa Cruz. Like it's uh -huh. not going to happen overnight and we might be able to look forward to that in 10 years or who knows yeah. what this uh this other side's going to look like, but um, it's interesting, right? I'm ready for a new world order for sure. Yeah. Preach. There's part of me, like, I don't, I don't keep up with a lot of like all of the YouTube stuff, but I kind of have my own theories. <laughs> I, I do believe like with the Mayan calendar ending in 2012, I think that that definitely was an end of the world as we know it. And ever since then, I think we've been in a slow kind of, change um of bringing about a new world order with a new kind of consciousness so i that's my belief so i've been kind of um feeling a change and a shift since 2012 with the end of the mayan calendar I, i've been really drawn to that for some reason and um i kind of just feel like i'm ready for it i'm ready for um things to change and i think there's so much um pain in the world 
that were kind of bursting at the seams. And um, I just, you know, I, like I said, it, I, I get overwhelmed by all of it. So I don't listen to too much of it. And I just kind of focus on um, controlling what I can control and hopefully putting good vibes out there and, and sharing good energy with people and hopefully raising kids that are going to be part of a, you know, positive change in the world. And um, I do my best to like, not create too much trash and, you know, not, not use plastic too much. I reuse everything like crazy. And um, sometimes you kind of feel alone in that and overwhelmed and like the plastic in the ocean and all of that. I just like, oh my gosh, straws and turtles. Um, but uh, I don't, I, I believe in a lot of that. I don't know why. And like all the conspiracy theorists, but I felt a shift and even in myself. Right. So my, you know, and even in you, I know you have your story. And I think that there's some of us that are kind of tuned in to this shift a little bit more and are making these changes and are realizing the changes that they need to make. Um, and, and hopefully we'll, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's scary in some ways too, because it's, there's a lot of things out of control right now. It's and terrifying. It's so, and I mean, you know, even with my kids, I'm like, I have a 16 year old, right. That's going to be in her last year of um, high school next year. And it's like, what world is she going into? You know, it's like, I got out of, I got out of high school and went straight into college, like where I could actually be in a room with other people and like, you know, go to lectures and all of that. And then I went to a job where I could Dorm actually life. sit at a, yeah, yeah, I didn't actually do any of that. I'm, I was already kind of, I had a weird high school experience actually. Um, no, I, I think we all did. I don't think yeah. there's, yeah. And it, oh, as man. they say, like if high school, if you crushed it in high school, not to no judgment, it's a saying, yeah. but you know, if you crushed it in high school, what, what's your current life look like, you know? So anyway, Academically I did okay, but the rest oh. of it was a little bit of a shit show. Um, yeah, exactly. But look at me now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's all good. <laughs> but I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And one of the things um, that came up for me hearing you talk is the concept of surrendering versus resisting. Yeah. And I think I love your approach in doing the work yourself, doing the work with your family, raising your girls to um, be an embodiment of quote unquote, the work, you know, and I think that's the best thing we can do, to be honest, you know, focus on ourselves and make sure that, you know, we're doing the inner work. And I, I do believe it has a positive ripple effect. Yeah. So. And all the, you know, all the people out there that are treating people badly and making bad decisions. I just feel like there's so much trauma in the world. Like so many people have been treated, you know, really badly in one way or the other had, parents, you know, grown up had parents that were really messed up or had people just abusive um, boyfriends or abusive spouses or emotional abuse or whatever. I mean, it's like, by the time you get to be like our age, you come with like a lot of shit you have to unpack, you know, and if you don't, good on you. But I don't know very many people that are our age that don't have a bunch of shit to unpack, you know what I mean? And so if we can just work on trying to release some of that trauma and work through it and not project it onto other people. I think that's what's happening a lot with these people. I just think they're somehow taking some kind of like internal trauma and projecting it and, and creating that cycle it keeps on going and going and going. And so, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just, as much as you can spread like love and kindness and, um, try to leave people better than you found them. That's one of the things I love about yoga is I hope that everyone that comes and interacts with me with yoga in one way or the other, they, I somehow leave them better than I found them. And I think we all can do that in some way. Everybody, everything would be better. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> one of the things that I love about your teaching style too, is that it's not just about like, oh, it's a hard workout. Like you always have like a strong intention and it's always different. And you bring that mindfulness into your class because not all teachers do that, you know? Mm, thank you. I try. Yeah, I think that's it. Because that's what yoga is truly about. It's not about the breath or the workout, right? It's a- yeah more about the philosophy is my understanding, right? Yeah. And, and that's one of the things like for those of you trying to kind of have a home practice more, um, we talked about that earlier is, um, I have a lot of, um, spiritual books that I read and one of my favorite ones, I'm, I'm looking over here cause I usually have them over here is the, um, the yoga sutras of Patanjali, which is kind of like the yoga Bible. 
And um, I just like grabbing one of my, and this is how I prepare for class too. So I grab one of my books. Um, usually my books are like flip and open and kind of read short passages. It's not like a really heavy reading or I have a lot of books I've highlighted. And then I find something that calls to me that's like a positive intention or something that is like, oh, that'd be something good to focus on, something I want to work on. And so um, I, and I like to do that in the morning. So most of my morning practices uh, or most of my practices in the mornings, I really like to start my day with like a clear mind, open heart, fresh intentions. It's like how you start the, your day really sets the tone for your rest of your day. And, um, and so when I prepare for class two, I kind of bring my practice into the practice I share with others, which is usually very intentional. Um, and that also helps me stay in body too, even with, you know, the poses that we go through. It's like where you place your foot, how you place your foot, how your foot feels on the mat. It's like, if you're thinking about all of those things, you're not thinking about anything else, which is a tool, right? Hmm. And I like to just not think about anything sometimes because my brain is like really busy all the time. Like there's monkeys with the tambourine or the symbols doing this, like a million of them. And I was like, give everyone a banana and just like, shut up. So. Totally. Uh, that absolutely resonates. I, I sent a voice text to my meditation teacher earlier today and it was like, dude, I just spent the last seven minutes listening to your story and I don't know what the hell you said. At some point you said something about well, the law of attraction bullshit and you went on a tangent about how that's a bunch of nonsense or something that I started laughing um, and it brought me back in. And then all of a sudden I realized I was daydreaming the whole time and I didn't listen to damn word you said. Yeah. And that's okay too. That's, it's, and that's yeah. a thing that people, I think they get caught up in meditation was like, my brain won't stop. And I think yeah. it's, it's not so much about stopping your brain. It's being like detaching from the thoughts. And as the thoughts go, you're like, oh, whatever. It's like you hold on to it for a second. And then you're like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I'm not paying attention to you. And you just got to keep on coming back, coming back and being like, yeah, not right now. Thoughts, you'll come back later, whatever. But sometimes I sit down and it's like I daydream and whatever. But even just sitting there and trying, you know, and not being hard on yourself and not being attached to like, am I meditating? Am I meditating enough? Yeah, like what's yeah. going on? It's just like a chance and every time. And then as those thoughts start going, you're like, oh, I can't do that either. Like all of this is part of the practice. Yeah. What type of meditation do you do? Is it mantra based? Um, no, I just... I kind of flip around, you know, um, I think anytime you connect to breath, whether it's moving is meditation, right? So sometimes I consider my yoga practice meditation. Um, I have a really hard time with seated meditation. Um, sometimes I can do it and sometimes I can't. Um, but so I've tried mantra meditation. Sometimes I'll switch to that. I really try to do um, technology free meditation where it's just me sitting with my breath um, and one of the things I actually do when I'm on, um, when I'm doing really good is when I wake up in the morning, I don't touch any electronics and I push the button on my coffee maker and that takes about eight minutes or so. And then I go and I sit on my couch for the whole time my coffee's brewing without touching anything and just breathing. And so that's like a good practice for me. And then I don't touch my phone and I don't have to like wait for the ding or time myself or anything like that. It's just a technology free one. Um, but yeah, I just try to connect to breath as many times as I can throughout the day and just taking yeah. like a really slow inhale, really slow exhale because it just feels so good. So absolutely. Yeah. Cool. cool. So, um, yeah, uh, the phone real quick, um, talking about that. So I have a question for you because I've never really talked, um, asked this question before mm -hmm. now that I think about it. But as a mom with two teenage girls, now, like I'm in a community where a lot of us are like trying to, you know, put our phone in another room at least. Mm -hmm. Actually, I got off a call today and our coach was telling us, um, to keep our phone by our bed only because he's helping us interpret our dream so we can send ourselves a voice text um or voice memo of yeah. the dream but anyways for me i keep my phone in the other room so that like, the technology is not there the temptation isn't there yeah. all that type of stuff now being a parent is that something like do you have your phone on silent or like what's your relationship to your phone when you're sleeping um, I have every single notification turned off on my phone, okay. <laughs> like every single one. And then I have a reminder at 7 PM every single night 
to put my phone away. And then I have a reminder not to pick it up until seven in the morning. I'm not a hundred percent good at that, but with my kids, um, you mean in terms of getting a hold of them or how I, yeah, well, because they're high, they're high school, they're teenagers. And, you know, yeah. and that's the stereotype at least like, you know, teenagers getting into trouble and like, you know, yeah. you're worried about getting the call in the middle of the night. So that's the oh. reason why I ask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my house is kind of the hangout house to be honest with you. So I'm always, nice. and right now no one's hanging out or doing anything. Um, but most True. of the time they're here as much as I can. And um, I'm really lucky. My older daughter is really responsible and is usually home when she says she's going to be home. And I haven't, I know my parents are looking for me constantly. Um, but uh, with her, she's pretty good. So I don't, I'm not looking for them very often. Um, they're really into horses. And so they're mostly out at the barn. They're, um, cute little equestrian girl. So they're always out at the barn and I really lucked out. I don't know why I'm not being punished like internally for how bad I acted. Um, but yeah, so far so good. They're, they're good kids. So, and I haven't, um, we'll see what happens. I still have time to have everyone go South on me, but, uh, so far so good. Well, that's a reflection of you and, um, uh, your husband uh, and the way you guys are raising them with that love energy. Right. So yeah, possibly either that or they're like little aliens that have been placed in my life for um, some kind of, you know, gift to me. I don't know why, but um, well, my, older, my older daughter was actually at some point, she's super intuitive. And when she was younger, I actually had a doctor, an alternative doctor, tell me she was a white witch. She probably so, is. To I think honest. so. I yeah. really do. I think she's one of those um, rainbow children. Have you heard of them? Like, like the highly in children? I thought they were called rainbow children, like super intuitive, like, yeah, I don't know. She's a, she's a cool chick though. She, I learned a lot from her. <laughs> so. you, you know, I, I am of the belief that the, the kids uh, entering the world now are more evolved souls than yeah. us. Absolutely. Signs of a rainbow child. Yeah. I'm going, is usually yeah. born to a crystal adult. What's a, do you know what a crystal adult is? I don't know a lot about it, but if the crystal okay, adult's I'm good, I'm hoping I'm one. <laughs> well, yeah. Rainbow child usually born to a crystal adult. So that sounds wow. like you're a crystal adult then. Um, yeah. What is a crystal adult? I need to look that up. Okay. Uh, oh. For, for another time, I'll look it up too. Yeah, for, Actually, for another time, we can uh, do a deep dive on aliens because you just brought up aliens and that's one of my favorite topics. Um, oh, have you seen them before? No, you? No, I really want to though. And a I'm ghost do... and I've never seen a ghost, but I'm, I'm open to it. Like, you yeah. know, oh, but you had a poltergeist in your house that didn't turn your microphone on. So I did. Yes, that's true. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing 5-MEO DMT soon. So maybe I'll see some ETs then. Have you done that before? No, have you? The DMT? No, but I had a friend that did it and she really liked it. Yeah. I've yeah. done ayahuasca as you know, so. Yeah. Different. I know. Is that part of your like protocol? Is that What's a regular that? thing that you do to kind of no. on your path? No. Um, so I... Uh, ayahuasca is what got me on the path. Um, I mean, obviously there's a lot of different things throughout the years and all that type of stuff, but ayahuasca is like what propelled me and um, really opened my eyes. And I had a ego death experience, like a spiritual awakening experience is what I'm referring it to uh, mm -hmm. uh, as with psilocybin, uh, a retreat for healing a few weeks after doing ayahuasca mm -hmm. and the two together were extremely powerful. And now I'm very careful to use the plants as tools as opposed to a crutch, you know? Yeah. Cause there's a big difference. Yeah. I've, I, um, I've done some journeys with, um, MDMA. I did one journey with MDMA and I, I actually, it was really cool. I, I think in my healing, following the stuff that happened with my mom, it was really powerful. But then, you know, there's the whole integration with everything that you've learned. And it's probably been about a year since I did that. And I'm kind of like losing touch with some of the things that I felt, you know, because like I was saying earlier, I really feel like you have to feel something truly to like be able to incorporate it into your life. And like no amount, sometimes no amount of yoga or meditation can kind of break through that subconscious and, and break through to like what you need to heal. So I totally like love the idea of all of that and kind of making progress in your life. But then I kind of, I'm a little bit scared because of my background of like relying on it too much. 
um, even I haven't done it as much, obviously, as you've done it or the different types of things, but I was just kind of curious. Um, I mean, I've only done it once, so, yeah. but um, I felt it was so powerful and I'm, I'm really looking forward, especially with like trauma and depression and anxiety. I think it's such a powerful tool and I hope that um, it becomes more widely um, used and accepted because I think a lot of people struggle and it's, it's so, it was so beneficial to me. Like I really, um, acknowledge so many different things on that journey that kind of helped me get over hurdles. I was trying to unsuccessfully get over. So really cool. I, I, I think there's something to be said in terms of using it as like a check-in, you know, yeah. that type of stuff. And you're right. Like it can, I see it a lot where it's hard to come back to this this uh, world you know what i mean yeah. yeah yeah it's like almost a little bit depressing i think sometimes <laughs> you're like yes. oh i felt so good and now i don't know if i feel so the same yeah there's an integration but i actually with my and here's all my my little the hangout house i love that's it. right no, that's um great. then i know where everybody is um but yeah it's a it's an interesting thing with like now I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, integration and like what you learn and keeping it with you. Like I remember on my journey, I took a bunch of notes and um, I had the woman that guided me, you know, I had a couple follow-up sessions with her, which I found were really powerful and um, just trying to stay connected to those feelings. <laughs> you're like always kind of like, in a way you're like chasing it a little bit. That's what I was, the word I was thinking in my head. Yeah. You said it. Yeah. yeah. But then that's why kind of like holistic, right? Even with the plant medicine, it's like, you're not going to find all of your um, answers there. It's going to take like, you know, you also looking into yoga and meditation and taking care of your body and getting outside and getting fresh air and sunlight. And it's like, I think there's such a holistic approach to all of this, just to wellness and um, I have a passion around like anxiety and depression, but um, so yeah. But I. and I see you out there in the water though. That's like the best. The ocean is yeah. like my absolute favorite. Heals yeah. everything. We're so fortunate to be so close to the ocean. So yeah, you know, um, yeah. They say integration is ninety percent of the work, and I refer to everything you just mentioned as soul life balance, you know, you've talked mm -hmm. a lot in terms of different ways you can honor your, your soul. And I think that's the best way to integrate instead of looking at your life as work life balance, looking at, at as soul life balance and realizing that work doesn't define us. And unfortunately in the society we live in, most of our waking hours are spent at work, but it's yeah. just a component of life, you know, so yeah. we can prioritize it differently. Yeah. But anyways, and I, I even bring some of my yoga into my work. Actually, I'm teaching a couple of classes next week to I people at work. Yeah. So I find a way to kind of cross over as much as I can. Any opportunity I can get to share yoga with people. I uh, definitely take advantage of it. I love that. That is amazing. Well, thank you, Alicia. I appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on the pod. Um, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? So um, I have an Instagram profile. You can follow me and contact me there um, at Wellness with Alicia. I also have a um, website. I'm kind of in between um, changing my branding. So my website is myalchemy.life. Um, I consider myself a wellness alchemist, pulling from all the different tools and helping people, you know, um, find their life elixir, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. So pretty much my website and then Instagram and I have a Facebook profile to wellness with Alicia. Cool. I'll put the links in the show Thank notes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia. We'll have to do it again and uh, definitely yeah. talk about aliens more. <laughs> that and beach yoga. Let's do it. Beach yoga. I am down. Okay. Talk to you soon. Cool. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.